Welcome to the musculoskeletal video series. In each video, we will demonstrate a complete joint-specific physical examination. These examinations would be appropriate for a patient with a specific musculoskeletal complaint. Hi, welcome to the lumbar spine and hip musculoskeletal physical exam video. I'm Dr. Karen Newcomer, a physiatrist at the Mayo Clinic, and this is my model PJ. I'm going to show you the lumbar spine and hip together because the conditions are often in overlapping and it's very important to examine both when you're thinking about hip and spine conditions. The first thing I'm going to do is inspect. It's important to inspect from, from the side, from a sagittal angle, to see if they have the normal curves in the spine. You have a cervical lordosis, so that curves anteriorly. You have a thoracic kyphosis, so it curves a bit posteriorly, and then a lumbar lordosis. You also want to inspect from behind to see if there is any pelvic obliquity or any scoliosis. Scoliosis can be structural, where it's a true scoliosis, or non-structural. I'll show you the difference when I do range of motion. For ins an important part of inspection is watching the patient walk. One thing you look for is a Trendelenburg gait. There are two types of a Trendelenburg gait. One is an uncompensated, and with an uncompensated, the affected pelvis elevates because there's weakness of the abductors, like, like PJ showing us. The other is a compensated Trendelenburg, and that's where the patient will lean to the affected side because it's so weak that they can't even, they, they, they can't just elevate their pelvis. So go ahead and show us the, the compensated Trendelenburg gait. Palpation of the lumbar spine should be done systematically. Start anteriorly with the ASIS, which will lead you to your iliac crest, which leads to the PSIS. Sometimes a patient will have a dimple here called a dimples of venous. Then you will go over the SI joint. The PSIS leads to the SI joint, and the SI joint is inferior and just it extends a little bit medially. This is a really common place to have pain, so you want to make sure you palpate the SI joint well. Across from the iliac crest, directly across, is the L4-5. This gives you a good landmark for palpating the spinous processes. So here's L4, here's L5, and here's your sacrum. You can extend above that as well if the patient has pain in the upper lumbar spine, of course. Range of motion gives us a lot of information about the lumbar spine. One thing we will look for is whether the patient has the structural scoliosis that I mentioned. So as they bend forward, we're going to look for a rib hump, and that would indicate that they have a true structural scoliosis. PJ is going to demonstrate that for us. Go ahead and bend forward and show me. So see how his rib elevates on one side? That indicates that he does have a true structural scoliosis. Come on back up again. With flexion, you want to look at the motion of the lumbar spine and make sure it's moving smoothly. Most patients should be able to touch their toes. Go ahead and go ahead and bend forward. And you're asking them if they have pain both when they go down and then also when they come up again. So come on, go ahead and come back up again. Again, looking for the motion of the lumbar spine. With extension, if someone has a problem with their posterior elements, they're going to have pain with extension such as a facet joint issue. Go ahead and bend backwards. Should be able to bend back about 20 degrees or so. Good, come on back up. And then we'll have them bend laterally from side to side. You're looking to see if there's a difference from side to side. Good, and the other side. And their, their axillary fold should come to about the midline with that. And he looks symmetric, so that's good. Stork test will isolate the posterior element on the side we're testing. The way we do this test is I'll have PJ stand on one leg, I'm stabilizing him, and then I'm passively extending him and asking him if he has pain. This is only done in, in patients who have good balance. I don't do this in my elderly patients or someone who has poor balance. The lateral hip and buttock is a very common area to have pain, so it's important to palpate and isolate the structures. The greater trochanter 
is one area of, of that the pain originates. The gluteus medius and minimus above it often are involved in a trochanteric bursal syndrome. The piriformis is a common area of pain, origina originates at the sacrum and inserts onto the greater trochanter. Ischial tuberosity is another common area of pain. Hams the hamstrings originate here, so you can actually palpate the bone and then you can extend down and palpate the hamstring tendons. Hip range of motion is best done with the patient supine. As with all range of motion, as we've, we've discussed, you want to make sure you do a full range of motion. So flexion, you need to bring them all the way up and see if they have pain, and you want to compare with the other side. Internal rotation is done by bringing the, the foot out. A common problem I find in people doing this is they adduct and abduct at the same time. You want to make sure you keep that hip in its socket and internally rotate, externally rotate. Straight leg raise is done to assess for a lumbar radiculopathy of L4 through S1. The way it's done is it's a passive test. You want to move slowly because a patient could have pain as low as 20 degrees of flexion. You slowly raise the leg and they're typically positive between about 20 and 70 degrees. Once you get past 70 degrees, you get tightness of the hamstrings and the test isn't as accurate. Faber's test is to assess the hip, but a patient may also have back pain with it. If they have back pain, think about SI joint because this test also stresses the SI joint. Faber stands for flexion, abduction, and external rotation. When you do this test, you want to hold down the pelvis on the other side to make sure that doesn't raise up. And then you just push down on the knee and you ask them if they have pain and if so, where. Fader test is to assess the hip, particularly for a condition called femoral acetabular impingement. It's tested by flexing the hip to 90 degrees, adducting the hip, and then internally rotating and assessing whether they have pain the pain, if they have it, should be in the groin. I should mention with the Faber's test, intraarticular hip pain is typically in the groin, so both of these tests, the patient, if, if the pain is coming from the hip, the pain should be in the groin. Thank you for watching the lumbar spine and hip physical examination video.